it is probably um, 60 might just be a new dawn for Nigeria. One thing I keep to say every day is the fact that it is not how far, it is how, how well. You never can tell if maybe at, the, at 60 we'll begin to get it right. But then we'll look to ourselves and give ourselves a pat on the back that, oh, if eventually this happened, I think we just have to uh, capitalize on it. All right, Francisca has given you a recap of what she thinks at 60 uh, we should be doing or we should have done. Yes, the guest this morning is quite a big one. He's a big fish. And when I get a big fish, it gladdens my heart to always have them right here in the studio. He's not a person than Peter in Neketin. Those of you who watch the Marak 88 squad, where the likes of Henry Wosu, the likes of Stephen Keshi, um, and the likes of um, Lake Muda Lawal will bear witness that this is a talented player who did it for this country. He played for the Flying Eagles as well at Chile 87, where uh, Coach um, Odumeze was their coach. He also played for the Green Eagles at Marap 88, and he's somebody who has seen it all when it comes to applying his professional trade right in ACB. He was in there. In Julius Vega, he was in there. He also played for Iwayamu National. Yes, that big team right in the east and he also did it in gabon it will amaze you to know that he did it for several clubs right there in gabon time will not permit us to read them out but as it is right now he also played in germany but the greatest part of it all is that he is a b license coach a uefa b license coach and also a consultant in sport so i want to call him an aficionado please welcome peter Nekety. good morning good morning uh thank you very much for having me here it's a privilege to be here and uh I want to thank God uh, for keeping us alive, uh, especially for leading us to see uh, the upcoming 60 years uh, celebration of our country's independence. We just pray that uh, it is going to be a new face, a new lease to things happening the way it is supposed to be in the country, both in all aspects and in sports. Thank you so very much. That's the great one, Peter Inekatin. Most times, when you get some of these ex-internationals, they can really relay their experience of what they've passed through, and it is worth noting that we can learn from them. Um, Peter, I'm going to be asking you some very pertinent questions because uh, we are looking at Nigeria 60, the challenges and the way forward, especially sports in another five years from now. But let me ask you, <coughs> excuse me, as an ex-athlete who played the game in all fields from the flying eagles up to the green eagles and your professional trade. How was it then and how is it now? Uh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll keep on saying that uh, the expectations uh, from people during our time and the present time is too high because if you look at our time, you'll find out that uh, majority of us are inbuilt talents. We were privileged to be groomed from the grassroots to the elite levels before we started leaving the country. Uh, majority of us had that opportunities because of the football administrators then in Nigeria. We are working seriously on the grassroots development programs where the scouting takes place. Mm. And you will find out that it is not like now that they have agents and uh, a majority of uh, the trained coaches all over. Then we just have mentors. We have mentors and we have some of these journalists, may so rest in peace, let Joe Awudu. They go around and scout for uh, players. They go around, they see a young guy doing very well. All they do, they just call the club manager, go to Soso Place. There's a little boy called, uh, by, by Soso name. Go there and see what the boy is doing. I think uh, that boy is going to be a good addition in your team. That is how majority of us were discovered. We, 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 we started from the streets, we were discovered, we represented Nigeria, we started being exposed by playing for youth fund teams, representing Nigeria out of the country. So when it got to the time for us to go out as professionals, it was easy for us because already we are used to the terrain, we're used to going out. But nowadays, the problem there is that because of the poor situation in the country, because of some of our administrators are failing us, you find out that kids that have not even played for their community, everybody is struggling to leave the shores of the country to go out to play because of the environments that they know if they go out there and play, the environment is okay, they will get their salaries. Yeah. Our major problem here is that players and coaches are going to be employed, contracts are going to be written, but at the end of the day, 
it is not going to be obeyed. Mm. You'll find out that players and coaches will be working. At the end of the month, they don't get salaries. Mm. Accumulated salaries for years mm -hmm. is not going to be paid. Mm. So that is the more reason why you see people that are not pre uh, prepared, they want to run out because of majority of the people playing football now. Majority of them are breadwinners in their families. Exactly. And if they are working and they are not seeing anything to do uh, out of it, the only solution is to be desperate to leave the church of the country to go and fend for themselves, for themselves and their families. All right, I got to hold you there because you've mentioned some few things and we're actually looking at the challenges bedeviling uh, Nigerian sports, not just football, athletics, boxing, wrestling, karate, taekwondo, judo, you name it. Uh, we have the potentials with a population of 200 million plus. We should be among the best when you talk about sporting nation. Funny enough, a lot of our own athletes have either gone to represent other country or they've decided not to uh, participate uh, in sports here in Nigeria. Francisca, let me quickly ask you, um, what would be your assessment of Nigeria 60 when you talk about sports in general? Well, um, like I said initially, yes, we, want, we wouldn't want to say that we've gotten it 100%, but at least we, we, we have been able to achieve one or two things um, when it comes to sports, especially um, football in particular, if I'm not mistaken. And if my brain have, um, has not failed me, I think we've been able to get um, the Nations Cup um, three times, um, won the title three times. I think that alone can be a reason why we should pat ourselves at the back because there are some nations who haven't um, gotten or even get close to um, winning the Afghan, um, um, the Afghan competition. Then every other thing, but not to say that we have gotten it 100%, but I think there are still challenges, one or two, that we need to um, look into. Peter here talked about the fact that our administration have failed us, and I think that's the one of the major um, major um, challenges we are facing because our administrators are really, really not doing well when it comes to um, sports in general in Nigeria, not just football, every other aspect like you mentioned. And I think it's because of the fact that we don't get technocrats to do um, this job very well for us because the truth remains that there is a difference between you being um, studying, um, knowing the, what administration means so that by the time you become an admin personality, you can be able to implement and there is a difference from you for, from you being oh just one man one side doing your own business all of a sudden you got an appointment they said to you oh come and take come and become an administrator into um, the football or sporting activities definitely there's no how you're going to get it right so okay. i feel one of the major challenges is the fact that we've not been able to get technocrats who can handle um, these positions and that's why um, we will continue to have the same issues. All right, well said, well said. Um, Peter, let me come back to you. Um, the issue is a lot of nations make big money from sports. Um, I'm not going to categorize it just football, but sports generally, if we look at nations like China, nations like Great Britain, uh, nations like uh, Germany, it's holistic. Why have we not been making gigantic revenue from sports as a nation? Uh, just like I said earlier on, you will find out that uh, our organizational structure is is already wrong from the from from the beginning. Uh, sports in general uh, is a money spinning uh, uh, industry. Industry, but when we put the wrong people at the wrong places, you will find out that it is very difficult for them to administer what you have placed them there for. Mm. Another thing we need to put also into consideration is the fact remains that. When you put somebody in a place that he does not have that experience or he does not have that interest, the first thing he goes there to do is for him to, to, to satisfy himself. You find out that all these monies are being given to all the countries to develop sports. But when you, when you get people that are not accountable, how do you, how do you develop your sports? Speaking when about accountability. A lot of the ex sportsmen wants to get into this position. Why do they find it difficult? Yeah, the fact remains that it is just it is politics. If you are not if you are not if you are not there, it is going to be difficult for you to, to, to get into it. That is the problems we're having now. Football, especially sports in Nigeria, is being mixed with politics. Mm. And if you don't rub shoulders with the politicians, if you are not there, it is very difficult for you to break in. Mm. You will find out that majority of the sports people that have made efforts to try to go into sports administration because of that is the area of specialization. Yeah. They are being frustrated. 
And you will find out that at the end of the day, when I came back to Nigeria, I said, our major problem as sports people is ourselves because of we are not comfortable with ourselves. We are not truthful to ourselves. These people come into sports, hijacked it, lose some of our members into, into their group, and they are using them against us. Mm. You find out that, for example, Odebami has contested for the for for mm. the uh, F F F FA chairman yeah. for for how long now? You times? find out with his with his prowess, with his experience and his development in in sports administration. You find out that he is not being given the opportunity to to go there. Mm. Just like what uh, my sister said here, these things have been done by appointment. Mm. But at the end of the day, I want to appreciate the new minister that we have him because of he has a yeah he has a good structural plan to go back to the grassroots, mm. which is uh, uh, going to be well. We've seen some of his actions; he's trying to re uh, redevelop the the abandoned projects that have been used before, the edifices that are being used for sports and all these things. You will find out that he's trying to revamp the principal scope. He's trying to uh, make sure that the use fund that takes care of grassroots football all over the country is coming back on board. You'll find out that that is where you get, you, you groom talents. We, during our time, we used to have the Oyanis of our time, the uh, Ogo, Ogo, the Ogo Koya Ogo of our Masa time. Yes. Yes. We, we stayed in the same camp in Guest Village. We were living like a very big family. We go out to the National Center. There are opportunities for you to train. But here, how many, how many areas can you, how many pitches are you going to find with certain tracks for That's people true. to come out and train? That's true. That is another problem we are having. And majority of the sports facilities have been destroyed, have been used, have been, have been, have been used now for, for other, uh, other activities. So you find out that instead of developing it and maintaining it, they are destroying it and, and uh, uh, using it for something oh, else. Purposes. So All right. I, I, I still have a lot of questions to ask you because you mentioned grassroots. I'll come back to you. But Francisca. Uh, let me quickly ask you, do we have a national policy for sports? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> That's one. Um, because he mentioned development. Yes. And that is a core area if we're going to develop in sports. Well, um, Prince, well, I think I've done a research um, as um, regards um, national policy when it comes to sports. And also, I think I've asked questions and I, qu I, I realized that there is actually a policy but the truth is, is it we, uh, it, that's where the problem is. And uh, I don't think we've been able to implement or accept the fact that um, there is actually a sports policy. Because by the time we begin to realize, there are a lot of policies, policies as regards to health, policy as regards to education, policy as regards a lot of things. But sports is not looked into because of the fact that um, probably the government or people in charge, they feel, oh, what is sports? But like he said, a lot of nations are using sports to boost their economy. Obviously. So I am looking at, and he just mentioned the fact that Sunday Diary um, has come in to do one or two things to make sure that um, sports in Nigeria gets another phase. I just hope he's been retained, and I just hope it gets the full support because you cannot do anything if no one is supporting you. Your support must come from the government who have appointed you to be in that position. But a situation whereby every day we keep talking about security, security not even still um, well looked into. We talk about health, health not looked into. We talk about a lot of things not looked into. Then how come? How sure, how certain are we that when we talk about sports, sports will be looked into? So the earlier we begin to, I think there is a need for everyone to sit down, especially the government. They need to sit down and identify these policies one after the other. If they do that, I think uh, probably we'll get it right this time around. But in as much as nobody is talking about the policy when it comes to sport, I think we'll still remain in the same position. Well said. Well, like we rightly know, sport is a unifying factor when it comes to the nation called Nigeria. And almost every other person sees sports as a rallying point for coming together as a brother or a sister. Just so a couple of days ago, it was discovered that sport is only contributing 0.005% to the national GDP, which is quite appalling and porous. I must let you know that in as much as nobody's giving you the support, we can't grow. So sport needs everybody's support. We'll be going on this break. When we come back, Peter and Francisca, they're still there in the studio. We'll be looking at the prospects and the way forward for Nigeria sport. We'll be back. <laughs> 